The Lord be with you. We are grateful that you have joined us for worship this morning. My name is Elizabeth and I am one of the associate ministers here. And we are grateful that we are gathered together this morning to celebrate the day that the Lord has made. I'd like to just bring to your attention two opportunities that we have that you can join us today in. One is the Hoffman Memorial Lecture that both of these are online opportunities. Uh, the first is the Hoffman Memorial Lecture at 2 p.m. Uh, and that will be a lecture that is presented in partnership with Candler School of Theology. And we are excited to hear from Karen Scheib and Carol Newsom. So we hope you will join us for that as well as an encore presentation of a video from Anthony Ray Hinton. And we hope that you will plan to watch that with us at 5 p.m. Indeed, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we rejoice in it. And at the sound of the bells, please prepare your hearts and minds for worship.
Let us say the prayer of confession as printed in your bulletin. And now let us confess our sins before God. Gracious God, you are abundantly generous with your love and mercy. And you have instructed us to be loving and merciful to others. In your wisdom, you command us to bear with and forgive each other, so we will live in harmony together. Yet, Lord, we confess we are more inclined to be selfish in our ways, and too often we are and for unforgiving toward each other. In disobeying your commands, we drive wedges in our relationships and create divisions among each other. Forgive us, we pray. Awaken our hearts again to your enduring and overwhelming love so that we may be intentional to love and forgive others. Hear the good news. God calls us to live as peacemakers in a strife-ridden world. Be patient and merciful to others as you have received patience and mercy. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. Today we are delighted to celebrate the sacrament of holy baptism, and I invite the families of Henry Philip and Owen Hart to the font. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of holy baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All of this is God's gift offered to us without price. Our Lord has expressly given to little children a place among the people of God, which holy privilege must not be denied them. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ, how he said, let the little children come to me. Do not hinder them for such belongs the kingdom of God. And to the parents, we ask these questions. Do you, in presenting these children for holy baptism, confess your faith in the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Do you therefore accept as your duty and privilege to live before these children a life that becomes the gospel, to exercise all godly care that they be brought up in the Christian faith and that they be taught the holy scriptures? and that they learn to give regular attendance upon the private and public worship of God. Will you further endeavor to keep these children under the ministry and guidance of the church until they, by the power of God, shall accept for themselves this gift of salvation and be confirmed as full and responsible members of Christ's holy church, which is open to people of all ages, nations, and races. Amen. What name is given this child? Henry Philip. Henry Philip, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And what name is given this child? Owen. Owen Hart, I baptize you in the name of the Father, 
and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. These two children have received the sacrament of baptism, and their Christian walk is now before them. Today, we remind ourselves that baptism is an outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. What that means is that the water in baptism is something that you can see and touch, and it symbolizes something you cannot see and you cannot touch the grace of God and the love of God that already at work in these children's lives. Where they will go from this day, I do not know. The decisions that they will be called upon to make, we cannot say. But what we do know and what we do say is that God will go with them every step of the way. Owen is ready to begin his Christian walk right now. (laughs) Ready to get down and just head right out into the world. But it's going to take us nurturing one another in the faith and helping each other grow in our knowledge of the Scriptures and our relationship with Christ. And so we as a congregation have an opportunity to enter into a covenant with these two wonderful families of our church. And so I would ask you as members of the congregation, will you endeavor so to live that they may grow in the knowledge and love of God through our Savior, Jesus Christ? With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ that these children, surrounded by steadfast love, may be established in the faith and confirmed and strengthened in the way that leads to life eternal. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy God, we are grateful for your love for us, for the grace that you offer us through Jesus Christ and for the presence of the Holy Spirit in this room and in our worship. Oh Lord, we pray your blessings upon Henry Philip and Owen Hart, that as they grow in years, that they would grow in the knowledge of the love that their Heavenly Father has for them. And we look forward to the day when they will accept for themselves the faith into which they have been baptized. We pray your blessings upon them and us as we seek to nurture each other in the faith. And this we pray in the name of Christ our Lord. Amen. it's children's time in the service, and uh, I invite all the children to give me your attention, both here in the sanctuary and those that are watching online this morning. I've got a story for you, and it's a story about unity. And the story actually takes place in the forest. Deep in the forest, there was a robin that had laid eggs and built her nest and was nurturing those eggs, hoping for them to become babies and and grow and fly out of the nest, when all of a sudden, a mean snake came crawling up the tree and it was moving closer and closer to the nest. And, And the mama robin knew exactly what was happening. That snake was coming for the eggs to have them for supper. And so the robin panicked and and flew all over the forest. Help, 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 I need help. There's a snake after my eggs. And as that snake climbed the tree, the little robin came across a wolf. And the wolf said, I'll take care of it. And the wolf ran to to the tree and saw the snake climbing up the tree and began to howl at it. The snake just looked down at the wolf and just did its tail a little bit and kept right on going. The wolf's howls had no effect on the snake whatsoever and it continued to inch closer and closer to the eggs. About that time, the bear came along and said, well, I'm the biggest animal in this entire forest. 
I'll go and rescue your eggs. And the bear came over and started climbing up the tree. And the higher it got, the branches were, were tinier and tinier. And all of a sudden, the bear slipped and fell back down and said, I can't get up that high. And all the time, the snake was inching closer and closer to the eggs. And the robin realized it was hopeless. Nothing was going to stop that snake. When all of a sudden, she heard a voice. And the voice said, I'll help. The robin looked around and said, who said that? Down here, look down there. And it was an ant. It was a tiny little ant. And the robin said, don't you understand? The wolf couldn't do anything. The bear couldn't do anything. What can you do? And the ant said, with a little help from my friends, I can do a lot. And so the ant called on all the ants out of the ant hill. And there were thousands and thousands and thousands of them. And they marched across the forest. They began to climb up the tree. They climbed on top of the snake that was almost to the nest now. Climbed on the snake. And then that one little ant gave direction to all the others. And at that moment, they all at one time bit down on the snake. And the snake was writhing in pain and shook the ants off and slithered back down and back off into the dark of the forest. And the eggs were saved. Now, it doesn't matter how small you are. It doesn't matter as long as you're willing to work together with other people, all things are possible. And that's a message that I want all of us to remember that when we work together, we can solve all the problems of the world when we work together as one. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you for your love. Thank you for the unity in Christ and the Holy Spirit. Help us to work together as one to bring your kingdom on earth. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you and have a wonderful week. We now enter into a time of prayer in our worship service and one of our greatest privileges is to be able to offer up prayers for and with one another. And we encourage you to continue to pray for our congregation and for those people that are in need around the world. As we turn to the Lord in prayer, we lift up the concerns and celebrations of our congregation of which we are aware. We ask you to keep these people in your thoughts and prayers in the days to come. This morning, we pray for those individuals in local area hospitals, uh, Rex Smith at Northside Canton, Charles Josie at A.G. Rhodes, and we pray for Ron Fole, who is receiving hospice care. Please pray for these individuals in the days to come. Let us pray. Most gracious and holy God, we praise you because you alone are our God. You made the heavens, all the starry hosts, the earth and all that is in it, the seas and all that is in them. You give life to everything and the multitudes in heaven worship you. We praise you in this most holy sanctuary and lift up our hymns and prayers to you as one voice. God, you call us as your people to live in unity with one another. Lord, we pray you will strengthen us as one body of Christ to have unity of mind, empathy for those that are hurting, a tender heart to help meet the needs of the hungry, and a humble mind to not think so highly of ourselves. Lord, each day we decide with intentionality what clothes we will wear. But above all, Lord, empower us to decide to clothe ourselves in love each day. For it is this love which binds everything together in perfect harmony. God, you call your people to live in unity with one another. Regardless of our political beliefs or apparent differences, you command us to do all we do in love toward one another. 
Inspire us to live out your commands and to strive to love everyone in harmony. Lord, we have hope for the future and know our city, state, and country are founded on basic principles of freedom. Allow us to hold fast to those freedoms while we come together in Christian unity to live out your instructions. We know that when we abide by your teachings, ultimately love, unity, and harmony reigns. Lord, sometimes it is difficult in life and relationships are strained, but God, you give us the ability to be patient, kind, and loving through our actions and words. Allow them to be at the front of our minds. Your Holy Scripture reminds us that it is our responsibility as Christians to lead the way for unity among the nations and the peoples of this world. Lord, we especially need you now. Our country is divided. For some, the days feel broken and uncertain. We ask for your help to set aside our differences and look to the greater cause, that we are to live as one, as the Holy Trinity is one. We ask that you help us to truly live a life where we love all our neighbors. Lord, we know you are always with us and we ask that you continue to surround this country and cover us with your mighty hand of providence. We pray for unity in our land, that in spite of our differences, we would be willing to stand strong together and live out our days with compassion and grace. We pray this morning for all our leaders here in America, those newly elected and those reelected, that they may come together as one to communicate well, to have the ability to compromise, and to make a positive difference for all the people of America. Fill each of us with the ability to bless our neighbors, to rejoice with those that rejoice, and to comfort with those that are hurting. Allow us to live in harmony with one another. And now with all the saints, we pray the prayer that Christ taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. As we come to the time in our worship service where we offer our gifts to God, we are reminded that during these extraordinary times, the work of the church continues. Your giving enables us to continue to be the hands and feet of Christ here in Atlanta and around the world. And we invite you to give through your tithes and offerings, either here in the sanctuary, online, via our website, or through the Peachtree Road app, or by mailing a check to the church. Let us pray. God of wondrous glory, your love fills our souls and we worship you today with grateful hearts. Your love is a precious gift that we do not hold and hide for ourselves but share with all the world. May the gifts we present today through our tithes and offerings proclaim your love loudly to those that often feel forgotten. We pray this in the name of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
Hear now these words from Romans chapter 12. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peacefully with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The last few weeks and months have been stressful. Normally, you can just sort of walk through life and ignore the differences that you have with other people. When you come across somebody that is different than you are, you nod, you speak, and you move on. But elections show up every four years to act like a prism to show us just how divided we are. And I know that now that the major election, the presidential election is over, there's kind of this assumption that we can just go back uh, to ignoring the divisions that we have. They're still there. The election certainly showed us the divisions that exist. There are things that have happened that you just can't unsee. There are words that have been said that you just can't unhear. And as a result, there is some hurt that people have experienced. You know what I'm talking about. You live in a nice neighborhood, you like your neighbors. Your children go to the same elementary school. Maybe you go to the same church and you see them in Sunday school, community events. You get along fine. And then they put a political sign in their yard. Or they post something on social media. And just like that, you can feel the gap between you and them. You can feel the wall between you coming up. You don't know what to say to them anymore. And if something gets said, chances are it's harsh. And then there is this strife and you just can't go back to the way things were. So what do you do? Where do we go from here with these divisions that are laid out in front of us? Well, today we come to the end of our three-week series on politics and peace. And our word for today is unity. And that brings us to our scripture lesson that has just been read for us from Romans 12. I remind you that Romans was written by the Apostle Paul to a church that experienced divisions. Not like Democrats and Republicans, these were theological divisions in the life of the church. There were some people that had a Gentile background, there were others who had a Jewish background, and these different theological perspectives were causing conflict in the church. And so Paul is writing to them. And in our particular passage, he is inviting them to a spirit of unity. 
Whenever you study Romans 12, you're going to find some incredible nuggets for Christian living. And as we mine Romans 12 today, I just want to mention two of them. These are two that lead to unity. The first is found in Romans 12, 15. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. What Paul is inviting the Christians in Rome to do is to practice empathy. Now, I know you know what sympathy is. When somebody goes through a difficult time, your heart goes out to them. You feel for them. You have pity for them. That's sympathy. Empathy is something much deeper. Empathy is when you feel what they feel. When they hurt, you hurt. When they rejoice, you rejoice. You have the same emotions and feelings that they do. Empathy. And that's what Paul wants the Christians in Rome to begin to practice with each other empathy. I want you to put yourself in the other person's shoes. I want you to think the other person's thoughts. I want you to get their perspective on life. It'll help you to experience more closeness to each other and a sense of unity with each other. This afternoon, we are going to offer an encore presentation of Anthony Ray Hinton's words to us four weeks ago. Anthony Ray Hinton spent 30 years on death row for a crime he did not commit. And he just recently was let out of jail. On Tuesday, he voted. If you have not heard his story, if you have not heard it from his perspective, if you haven't heard it in his words, I invite you to tune in this afternoon at 5 o'clock on the website of the church and listen to his voice. It's in listening to his voice that you begin to find yourself in his shoes, seeing life from his perspective. And what we who are white are able to do is sort of check our privilege at the door and see what it's like to live in somebody else's shoes. Empathy. And when we can practice empathy with folks who are different than we are, we find ourselves moving towards unity. When I was a young associate minister... My senior minister would take me to conference meetings. Uh, And at that conference meeting, there would be other associate ministers, and we were allowed to be there. We just sat at the children's table. And as we sat with each other, we shared stories with each other, and I began to realize that there were ministers in the conference who were competing with each other. They were competing for better appointments. They were competing for plum committee assignments. They were competing with each other for notoriety in the conference. And as a result, when one didn't get what he or she wanted, they began to put each other down. There was strife. There was bitterness. And I discovered that as I met with my fellow associate ministers. And we decided, I know you're shocked that that would happen with ministers. You're completely, you're, you're disillusioned about ministry, but I'm telling you, it happens. I decided as a young minister that that ought not be. And so we decided that we would begin to rejoice with those who rejoice. And we would weep with those who weep. We would empathize with each other. We decided that we would meet together once a month for lunch. And we would talk and we would root for each other and we would care about each other. We were different, but we would empathize with each other. 
We've been meeting together for lunch now every month for over 30 years. And I'm convinced it's why some of us are still in the ministry. Empathy with one another. When we can empathize, when we can see life from the perspective of another person, we're on the road to unity. And that's what our country desperately needs now. It's what our church desperately needs now. Empathy. The second nugget that I want to bring to your attention this morning is found in verse 16 where the Apostle Paul writes that we should live in harmony with one another. I love that word, harmony. I have to imagine that Paul was referring to music when he mentioned the word harmony. We all know that people in a choir have different voices. They're different people. They're altos and sopranos and tenors and basses. But they all can come together with their differences, with their different voices, and they can sing the same music, and they harmonize with each other, and they have the ability with that music to lift us into the courts of heaven. I think that's what Paul had in mind, unity in the midst of diversity. My mother says that when we get to heaven, there aren't going to be any denominations. Well, if that's the way it is in heaven, I wonder why we have denominations here on earth. And I've got a suggestion. What is it that the Baptists emphasize? Well, you know what it is. It's baptism and it's the new birth. They preach about it every Sunday in church. Have you been born anew? Have you been baptized? Then come up here and accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior and be baptized under the water. They do that every Sunday. It's what they emphasize. What about the Episcopalians and the Roman Catholics and the Lutherans? What do they emphasize? The sacrament of Holy Communion. Every Sunday they celebrate the sacrament of Holy Communion. At every wedding they have the sacrament of Holy Communion. They even serve communion at funerals. It's what they emphasize, that we are connected to God through this gift of God's grace. What do the Presbyterians emphasize? The providence of God. Go to a Presbyterian church. The hymns are about God's providence. The prayers are about God's providence. The sermons are about God's providence. God is in control. Tuesday night, I looked at my Twitter account and I saw that a Presbyterian friend of mine had just tweeted, God is in control. I'm going to bed and I'm going to sleep like a Presbyterian. The providence of God. Well, what do we Methodists emphasize? We emphasize sanctification. We are going on towards perfection. Once you've been born anew, it's important to grow in your faith and live out your faith. Did you know that the Methodists have started more schools, hospitals, and orphanages than any other denomination? Living out our faith. And and so you ask me, which one's the most important denomination? And I'm going to give you an answer you don't expect from me. They all are. We need the Baptists to remind us of the new birth. We need the Episcopalians and the Roman Catholics and the Lutherans to remind us that daily we need to stay in contact with God's grace. We need the Presbyterians to remind us that God is in control, therefore be at peace. And I believe they need the Methodists to remind us that we are to live out our faith on a daily basis and build the kingdom of God on earth. Now I'm going to give the Methodists the last word here 
John Wesley used to say, though we may not think alike, may we at least love alike. Unity in the midst of diversity, and it creates harmony. Harmony that enables us to get out beyond our circles, include other people in our circles, and begin to let God's light shine into our world. Now, we in the church are not immune to the problems in the world. And certainly the pandemic has created a great deal of anxiety in us, both physically and uh, mentally. The economic crisis has created some uh, financial stress in our lives. And the social unrest has left us on edge with each other. And then the election comes along and it all gets magnified. Where do we go from here? The world has an impact upon us. But I want you to know is we can have an impact on the world as well. And the impact that we as the church need to have on the world is not that we rise up with one voice and condemn and whine and complain and tell what's wrong with the world and who's to blame for it. I love the words of Benjamin Franklin. Instead of cursing the darkness, it is better to light a single candle. And that's what we're invited to do. And I've got an idea. You know, as you've ridden around the neighborhoods recently, what you've seen is political signs in everybody's yard. Well, now that most of the elections are over, those signs are going to come out of people's yards. What is going to fill the void? What message is going to be out there? Well, I'll tell you one. This week, we're going to send a packet to your house from the church. That packet is going to have a prayer in it that invites you to pray every day for peace in the midst of anxious times. There's going to be a brochure in there about what the church is doing. There's going to be a pledge card in there. But the thing I really want you to know is that in there, we are going to give you a yard sign. The sign says, love your neighbor, y'all, Peachtree Road, United Methodist Church. That's the message that I would like for us to get behind, to become united about, to see as common ground that we can work together on to create unity and empathy for one another and put that message out into the world. Love your neighbor. It seems to me that if we could get that one right, we would experience unity at least in the church. And what our divided world needs is a united church. And I started this series by saying, I am hopeful for the next few years. It's not because of who got elected. I am hopeful because I believe God is at work in the church in a new way. And if we can tune into it, if we can see it and begin to practice it in our lives, I believe we can make a difference. So let's not curse the darkness. Let's let our light shine. And know this, the darkness does not overcome it. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, as people with a common faith, I invite us to stand together wherever you are, and affirm our faith in Jesus Christ. Let us unite in this historic confession of our Christian faith, the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. We've had a good day of worship here today, and I'm delighted that those of you who have worshiped in person and grateful to welcome those worshiping online. Uh, This morning, uh, it's been good to be in the house of the Lord, 
And if you'd like to be with us again next week, uh, you may register online beginning this afternoon at 3 o'clock to be here in person. And certainly we hope to welcome you online as well as we continue to move through these days. For your help this afternoon, we do have a couple of webinars. One is at 2 o'clock through Candler School of Theology, the Monfred Hoffman Lecture Series. And two incredible lecturers will be presenting. You may register through Candler School of Theology. Also at 5 o'clock, as I mentioned during the sermon, uh, a rebroadcast of the Anthony Ray Hinton uh, conversation that was held four weeks ago. And we encourage you to tune in and to hear what you can do to continue to build the beloved community that Christ envisions for us. Unity. It requires hard work. It requires empathy. And it requires us uh, to work together towards harmony. I pray that in these days, we will find the strength and the courage to do just that. Now, would you stand to receive God's blessing. Now may the grace, mercy, and peace of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit bless, preserve, and keep you both now and forevermore. And may the peace of Christ be always with you. Please remain in place and the ushers will dismiss you row by row beginning from the back.